It is good to be here, and I want to thank every single one of you who has come out. And I also want to thank the other patriots who signed up online and said, I want to be there with you in spirit today. And uh, we know they are, don't we, patriots? Yeah. I want to give just a moment. I have a couple of things, a couple of statements from some really cool people that you're going to love. And I also, of course, we're going to hear from Mrs. Tamarisi, uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to hear from her personally. Uh, but first, I want to give a chance, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And even, I even had a military guy today on my Facebook page saying, I don't know, something about this doesn't sound right. And it's so easy for us because we live here and we have most of us have been around the border. How many of you have been across the border? So almost everyone here has been across the border at some point or another. And you know those signs are really confusing, especially when it's under construction. So instead of taking up your time uh, talking to you uh, in, in uh, hopefully with the best way I could inspire, what I'd rather do is give each of you a chance to ask the questions. Because I've spoken to Mrs. Tamarisi extensively, and I want to give you the chance to ask the questions that you don't have answers, the questions you think you're going to get. Because your job from here, Patriots, is to go out and tell the world. First thing I expect is for everyone to be plugged into social media all they can. That is the way we're going to fight this fight. We can't go door to door for this one, friends, right? So, uh, so that's what I want to give you a chance to do. So I'm going to open it up to your questions, your questions, whoever has questions. If I can answer them, I will. And if I can't, I'll tell you that too. So without any further ado, Patriots, what are your questions? Yes, ma'am. You cannot go see him. Uh, right at first, they were letting people see them. Our speaker, Ken Bell, was one of those people that got in to see him. Uh, and, uh, but at this point, you cannot go see him. And in fact, his mother told me that she couldn't be at the hearings today uh, because she didn't know if she could get into the courtroom. Now, it's not, it's not a normal size, uh, what we would consider a normal size courtroom with like all the people and all this, just a very small room. And, uh, and it's a very private thing. And it's one judge. And he makes those decisions. And so, no, you cannot get in there. In fact, I know that the media, many of you were there today, and I talked to some of you, and they said that the media couldn't get in. There, there was nobody going in to support him. But he does know we're here. He talks to his mother every single night. He knows all about this rally. He said to thank you personally for being here for him tonight. He does know we're here. He is paying attention. She is updating him every night. And so uh, he is getting information. And the other thing she told me that I think is really special is that she prays with him every night. Amen. Moms, can you so relate to that? Like your son's calling home and he only has a limited amount of time, but you're going you're gonna to take the time to pray with him. And this is another thing that tells me about who Andrew Tamarisi is. He not only prays for all of you who are out here defending him and for the media who's carrying his message to the world, he also is praying for the Mexican guards and for the Mexican judge. That's the kind of person he is. I'll tell you something else about the kind of person that Sergeant Tamarisi is. Did you know he was meritoriously awarded the rank of sergeant, which I guess is really unusual. I'm not from a military background. I claim total ignorance on this. But according to his mom, that's very unusual for a 25-year-old. That's because he served two tours of duty where he was injured in both tours. He went and was, and was injured the first time. He went back to defend not just Americans from terrorists, but Mexicans from terrorists. Now it's our time to serve him and defend him. Can we write him? Can we write him? You know, that's a very good question. I told you I would tell you I don't know if I don't know, and I don't know. But I can tell you this. I will, I will absolutely ask Jill when I talk to her, and if that is possible, um, I will put his address, uh, whatever address she gives me, out there for you all. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Gina Loud, and that's where I've been posting most of the things that I get that I don't think are out in the media enough or that I think will help you uh, to clarify the situation for you. Where's the celebration going to be when we get him back? That's a great question. Any offers? <laughs> Anybody have any ideas on where the celebration should be? Uh, certainly, we will have a celebration. And if this, if this whole program here between the United States and Mexico is expedited, we will be putting thanks in the proper place. That's to be sure. We're not just here to protest. I want to say another thing. Uh, this is a bipartisan event. This is not a political event. Uh, I'm known through politics. Uh, certainly, Mike is known through politics. But I have a few more names that are known through politics, too. And a lot of the people that stand with us today, we differ. 
Uh, Tamara Holder is one who's very supportive of our event today from Fox News. And uh, she's a known lefty on Fox News. I've, I've taken her on on Sean Hannity's show before. But she stands with us today because this isn't about Republican or Democrat or even Mexican or American. This is about doing the right thing here today. And I want to say this. Let he who has never taken a wrong turn cast the first stone. Do we, well, I think he's being fed there. Um, he's not complaining. Apparently the situation where he is now is much better than the night that uh, Mrs. Tamarisi tearfully relayed to me. She told me that uh, the first night he called her and he said, Mom, I'm not going to survive tonight. And he said, but I, I don't want you to come to investigate. I don't want anybody to just let it go because anyone who comes will be killed too because he'd been threatened in the prison in La Mesa. But the prison he's in now, I guess, uh, he feels a little more secure. Uh, but this is the thing. This man has endured two tours, two tours of duty. We've talked about that. He's endured the PTSD on foreign soil before, twice. This is the third time this man has been traumatized on foreign soil. Don't you know, this man was scheduled for his first PTSD group therapy session on the very day he was arrested and he didn't make it to that therapy session. That's why he was in San Diego, was to get this therapy. My background is in mental health. And I can tell you that his therapy for that PTSD that he suffered for our freedom is ever but as important as the heart medication that you're going to take tonight or, 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 the, or the diabetes treatment that you're going to take tonight. And if this were a health condition, would we be treating it the same way, just leaving him there in a prison where they have no resources? They said, we don't even know what PTSD is. We can't give him treatment for that. He's receiving no therapy. He's been traumatized again in the prison. And uh, we're letting this stand. And so we call on not just Mexican officials, but on U.S. officials to expedite this process. Andrew understands that there's a process. We're asking for expedition here, and that's our, our key word right now. I certainly can't speak for any elected officials. She asked me if the mayor is going to do anything. I know that I saw some posts directed at him today asking him to do something, and we'll certainly hope so. Again, this needs to be communicated. This is not a partisan issue. This is not a political issue. Uh, but certainly there are things that politicians in the area could do, and we hope that this is a great. You know how the politicians always talk about bipartisanship? Is this not the best issue ever to go ahead and show us a little bit of that bipartisanship? Excuse me if my Missouri roots are showing. It's the show me state. But show us. But cry out loud. You talk about statesmanship. You talk about reaching across the aisle. This is the perfect thing to join together on. And, and get our Marine home. How's the petition doing in the White House? Yes, Mrs. Tamarisi told me last night she was delighted with the progress of the petition, that she is uh, completely overwhelmed with all the people that have, have reached out. You know, for a woman who spent the first 12 hours while Andrew was in prison after that horrible phone call she got saying, I'm not going to survive the night, um, uh, she spent that night on the, on the floor in a fetal po position clutching her Bible, she told me. And this is a real mom with real pain, who, by the way, raised up somebody who defended our freedom here in the United States. And uh, for somebody to go from that mindset to a mindset of just feeling so gracious and so wanting to thank people, yes, for signing the, p the petition, yes, for being here today, yes, for signing up on uh, the Facebook pages, yes, for asking the media to be here, yes, to the media, thank you so much for showing up. Can we have a hand for the media that showed up here today? I think there's something very special about this area and that we identify. We remember Benghazi. Yeah. Yes. We know that our guys weren't brought home and uh, two of them have close ties to San Diego as all of you know. And uh, that of course Glenn Doherty and Ty Woods. I talked to Ch Ty Woods' father Charles on the phone and he told me uh, to personally thank you all for keeping his name alive and his memory alive and that a great way to do that is to go ahead and uh, fight to get this Marine home. And uh, I, I think that that's why San Diegans are so impassioned about this, and we're not going to let up. I can assure you of that.